All right, so we are going to do something that I've always wanted to do. Okay, it's a nice combination of technology and woodworking and uh, some metal working. So some things that I've done new with metal, I'm gonna all integrate them together. So I am a big fan of uh, retro gaming. I don't have the uh, capacity to stay focused and play these games, but I do like, I'm nostalgic, you know, and uh, I played some consoles when I was younger, and uh, it stayed with me, some games I really liked. Even when I have them now, I still don't play them, right? But what I do enjoy is the joy it brings kids, and I have some kids that really like to play my retro console, so... I decided, right, that I'm going to do a uh, some sort of like a, uh, a, I guess like a holder. So this is my uh, this is my test case, right? This is a Dell. Um, what is it? Uh, where you go? It's an Optiplex 7050, right? It's got an i5 processor. I would have rather have an i7, but this is just a test case. I just wanted to get it to see how it, the build will work. I think I always, you know, I don't know if the processor is upgradable on this motherboard, but they're they're so cheap. You get them on eBay, okay? And um, we're gonna put Bato, Bato Serra. As, I'm sorry, it's already on here, and we're going to uh, build a, a case to hold this to make it beautiful not just a computer right and we're gonna also do some work on this outside case too to make it a little bit more interesting than what we have right here so as you see that's a core i5 okay and uh it's got a solid state drive uh, 128 gigs and uh runs really well it's good for anything from uh, N64 back. So any cartridge games up until N64, anything near, forget it. All right, it's got a built-in uh, video card. So it doesn't really give you a lot of options because it's not the best, but you get the point. So I've been working through a couple designs to try to figure out how I want to kind of hold the um, the retro gaming system, the Batocera retro gaming system, and uh, you know, I've gone through a couple iterations where you know, I have like a triangle. That's the computer. It sits in there. A back plate. The computer sits against it, uh, like a sandwich here. This would be a front piece of wood. Back. You know, just gone through a lot of iterations, and I kind of want. I'm settling on something more like this. This is the design I'm, I'm settling it on. I, I, yeah. It's like the right amount of angles, but not too much. Um, you know, I don't want to make it too big and bulky. I want to try to keep the same small form factor. And uh, so I think this is this would be a good um, design. You know, we'll mirror both sides, put some dowels across here to have the have it sit inside of and uh with this the who can't see a little close uh what we'll end up doing is uh i want to do like a i think a brush metal would look would be nice on this you can see there's scratch right here so there's metal underneath i mean it is metal but i mean this it's we can probably get a nice silver brush metal look on this, I think. You know? So, alright, let's do it. Let's go ahead and start this project. We'll start with the woodworking part first. Yeah, software is already installed. And we'll give you, I'll give you a couple of caveats about the uh, BIOS for this. When you do designs, um, you want to think about the usability of your design. It's not usable and just looks good. It's kind of like high heel shoes, you know? All right. The issue here is um, in a perfect world, right? We would, there would just be a wireless 
controller, right? But occasionally, someone will want to use a wired controller or even a keyboard, you know? And uh, we have four USB ports here, one in the front, and uh, you have an HDMI and a VGA out, and an Ethernet here. This is this has a wireless cards that kind of like most likely people will prefer to use the wireless. Now, connectivity right has to happen in a way that doesn't cause too much duress. So I was thinking that if 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 it sits in something like this, right, what we can do, see it's low enough that. We have uh, access to the USB, but not the video card. If we flip it this way, right, we have access to the power button, card, and uh, video outputs, all, all of them. So this is this is this is the perfect height for this. You don't want to go too too much more. You know. Um, at least not on both sides, you know? So let's try that. Let, let's go ahead and see. Because if we look at the design here, this is what we're going for. Oops, I'm sorry. That. Okay. So let's go ahead and mark this off. Alright, we are maybe 45 degrees. Maybe not even. I don't think I want to do 45 degrees. Probably want to do something a little less on a different angle on this, maybe. Hmm. It would be a little bit more interesting. Something like that. See, once it's cut, I can use... Uh, I can use... this with a router, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do this. Angle. We'll do 45 degrees. Right here. So that's our general shape we're going to use. Something like that. Yep. Not too. Not too obnoxious, so it doesn't take up too much space, but but it's interesting to look at, you know? It's kind of like a night out in Miami. And you see that girl, you know? You get the point. It's analogous. It's just interesting to look at. It's as much depth as we're going to get out of this. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're using this as our template here, and we'll cut the other side to match this side too. It's a little hard to see, but uh, the angle for the uh, the non 45 degree side is actually 37.9, 37.8 degrees. So we're gonna cut those first. Mike, what I'm thinking is that we can do it for safety reasons, right? We, instead of like we can cut this angle off, and then because the wood's nice and long, we just flip it over and cut it off over here, you know. And that way we can do it as a batch. That way it'll be consistent, you know? Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get your safety glasses. Yeah. I want you to watch something. Watch my fingers, right? So you want to make sure, I don't know if you can see over here. See that? My fingers are like this. So you don't want to cut your fingers off, you know, it's easy to cut and not realize you're cutting your fingers off until it's too late.
blade's getting a little dull. It's burning a lot. Okay. Alright, so those two angles are the same. Uh, let's focus on this 45, right? get the same cut right over here what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do a, like a, like a stop block so this is what we have we have a pole here jammed up against the piece that we cut off earlier right Put the table saw locked down. I mean, the uh, double bevel sliding compound saw locked down. That should give us a fairly accurate cut. See, I got. Make sure that's just, make sure that's the right side. Yeah, that's correct. Do we like it? Yes. Flawless. They are the seam. Alright, we can always pass a router over it. You know, just tape it together and do a router. Get it even more precise. This looks pretty good for now. All right, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> this already looks pretty cool. Um, so that's roughly the angle we want to kind of place it. Uh, let's see. Man, this is looking really awesome. I'm loving this. So I used the, I guess it's like, what is it? 37.9 degree angle to kind of support the uh, computer. And I really like I mean, I, I love it. I love this angle. For, I was going to just do 45 degrees, but no, this is this is way more interesting. It's kind of like off. Your brain is going to kind of struggle because it, like, it likes 45 degrees, it likes 90 degrees, it likes 180 degrees visually. But when you do something like this, right, that's not exactly 45 degrees, all of a sudden it creates an emotion. So your design has emotion embedded in it. And... Uh, we're going to conjure up a lot of emotion with uh, emotions with this approach. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to use some dowels to kind of support the computer. Uh, that's what we're going to use for the center. Yeah, let's rock that. We'll uh, squeeze these together. Kind of, I got to figure out what we want to do with the angles here. So let me see, how can we mark this, right? Uh, if if that's what we if that's what we want, something like that, then we need to kind of hmm, I need to put two dowels, right? One back here and one up here. How are we gonna do that? We need to keep that angle. All right, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go like this. Yeah. That's where we want the computer to be, right? We'll line these up. Okay. Good. And then I'm going to mark it back here. So we just need one side, so it doesn't really matter. 
this angle has to go down to something like here. Right? And that's going to be the back part of this. And then this comes forward right here. And that goes down to here. Something like that. Right? Okay, good. So now I should be able to go like this. We don't want to touch the very bottom, we just need it to we need it to be off the surface a little bit. So something like this. There you go. Oops, you didn't see, sorry. Down, 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 down. Okay, so I just got that there. Got it bumped up like that. Just draw a line. That's how, that's how the computer sits. We probably want to move this back a little, you know, when I think about it. Because the back part, no, 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 that's fine. We can always, uh, <laughs> uh. I need to make sure that this is exposed. So, all the connections, yeah, we're good, okay. Hmm. Okay, so why dowels, right? Why do I want to use dowels? Well, the thing about the dowel is that it, uh, it, uh, when you put this forward facing like that, I want you to be able to see all the way through, you know, to create a really awesome effect. And, uh, that's the reason why. So I'm thinking that the uh, angle, this angle here is what we're going to use for the computer to sit in. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to, if you're going to try to replicate this, you're going to have to do, you know, make your choice if you want it more that way or that way. It's up to you, you know. Uh, I'm going to go for this angle, and uh, so it's going to end up looking like this, see, so, so that's what it's going to look like, and uh, here's a couple things to think about, we got to kind of think about these things, right? All right, one is the bottom here, we don't want the bottom to rub. All right, so we need to do something to keep this from getting to the very, very bottom, right? And uh, when I say this, I mean the case itself. Now, if we, if we put two, you know, we're basically going to trap it on an angle like that. If we, I don't know, maybe maybe we can do something where we, uh, I don't know, maybe put some pieces of wood here, just try to keep it like that. I don't know. We'll see. Shall we? Yeah. All right. Next step is, um, we got to use this, these template, these marks as templates. Now we got to do some, drill some dowels, dowel holds, um, like one there, one here, just two, two should be enough. Maybe three. One, two, three. I don't really know. Hmm. One, two, three, four.
So we got some double-sided tape here we're going to use to uh, stick these two together. And um, if you ever uh, have tape that just doesn't seem to work too well anymore, you can uh, stick them in the microwave. So I just microwave this for like 20 seconds and the glue has melted. Works really well. Probably shouldn't do that there because I need to drill through. Whenever you have dowel, right, like I use dowel a lot in my pieces, uh, you want to keep this side, the size of the measurement, the dimensions, uncut. Cut this side last. So this says it's half inch by half inch by 36 inches. And uh, I have a half inch uh, Forrester bit in here. And we need to make sure that, because sometimes this is a little too wide or it's too small and, you know, it doesn't match what it says. So. We're going to do a little bit of a, um, just a little sacrificial cut and uh, we're just going to make sure that the, uh, that it, uh, it matches the dimensions that it says. Right. So you notice I have a piece of wood underneath it. This is to help with a breakthrough. So breakthrough is when it comes through and it kind of like damages the wood, it like tears it apart and then you get this nasty hole on one side. You try to minimize breakthroughs. So you, you end up with something that looks like that. Anyway, so let's see. There's our little test hole that we just drilled. Now that's gonna work really well. Yep, okay. So the dowel matches, we're good to go. Now we're gonna do four dowels, right? One, two, three, four. And this might work just to keep it off the ground, possibly. I'm, I'm not sure, right? Uh, this is what's important. Uh, I gotta go... I gotta make sure that <laughs> this, is, this gets tricky here. Um, well, let me think about it. So, Alright, uh, I'm running a lot of scenarios here. If I drill that inaccurate, we'll get the angle here. That, that, we'll get the angle here. Um, but, you know what I'm gonna do? I gotta like, come in a little bit more on the inside for these holds. Basically what I'm saying is this. Uh, if this is not the same going down to here, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to end up with uh, a piece that's like kind of like sloppy, flopping around like that, and uh, I don't want that. So it's best to go make sure you get these two correct, right, and then err on the side of getting a little bit closer that way with this side, so that way it'll be tight but it'll be precise. So I actually have to take some time and mark that really well. I feel like this is our, our third time trying this. Okay, here we go. So I need a little extra light because I can't really see that hole. I mean, the, the hole where to uh, go down on that line. Precision is really important right now. So we need to... Yeah, right there. Yep, that'll work. So let's have at it. Let's see how clean that hole is. All right, great. Let's do that. Let's do that uh, three more times. So there we 
we go. Not too bad. We did pretty good on the back here. We had one tear out right here, which is not too bad. Um, well, we'll see how I can obfuscate that. And out on that front's great. All right, we need to do a uh, kind of like a fitment test on this. Here. So, all right, we are going to see how long the dowel needs to be. All right, that's what we want. So let's see. All right, uh, let's take a, a bit of a measurement. Let's Okay, so that is, hmm, two and fourteen sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so I did my mark, I have my gang cut set up. Gang cut means that's what you're going to do over and over. The computer happens to be the same thickness as two of these, which is so convenient. And uh, we gotta get our wooden dowel in here. Pretty good stuff. If you want like cutting boards, you put cut put, put this on your cutting board. Um, ow! Somebody needs a little bit of something. Guess we're gonna go a little hammer time. I'm gonna go all the way in. Just gotta go in just enough to see what we're working with. Hmm. Oh yeah. Who's your daddy? That's hot. Oh, we're not even there yet. <laughs> that is... Yeah, that's special. That's turning out to be something really, really beautiful. And uh, it would be more like this. Oh gosh, I lost a... I lost a leg. I want to do that. Okay, either way. Um, it would be more like... Like this. Gotta be careful, I don't want to rip the uh, rubber legs off. Give it a little bit more room here. Right. Oh, this leg fell off the back because I jammed it in. It's good to know they come off. Anyway, it'll be more like this. The power button here. Uh, you can see that uh, right there. Power is going to be more upwards. Like this. Come on. Uh, no, I didn't want to pull it completely apart. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's try that. Okay, power will be up. There you go. Just like that. Whew. Yeah, we're on to something. We're doing good. This is this is the direction I want to go in. It's a great base. Hold the uh, computer. Alright. Going in a right.
So we had to mix up some epoxy. And uh, this is tabletop epoxy. It's two parts. You want to do it in equal portions. So we need, hopefully this will pour. I don't know. It's, it's been sitting. I don't know how well it behaves and it sits for too long. We don't need too, too much. For the same amount. Perfect. And we need to put some color in there. So we're going to go some nice red acrylic. Very, 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 very red. Alright, so what I've done here is I've taken some Tyvek tape and uh, have made a little bit of a, you can see a little wonderful surface area that's trapping, gonna, it's going to trap the epoxy. I've taken the dowels, wrapped some Tyvek tape around the dowels, just kind of lightly push them in, right? And what I want to do is just, I'm going to try to pour it into the all the little don't worry if it's not perfect there we go so I'm going to try to make this a little bit more interesting so we have some yellow acrylic. And we have ourselves a cable tie here. effect. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, that's fun looking. Whoa. Like looking at the Amazon River or the Nile, things are just flowing.
Oh, that's fun. getting there so I think that's that'd be that'd be fun to look at it kind of pops you know Maybe we can get a little bit more on this leg let's see it's hard to figure out when to stop you know and then you go too far and you're like oh man I should have just stopped sooner That's the effect I want, you know, it's like a, a river that gets uh, contaminated. And you have like streaks of mud. I don't know what's in this river. It's making it that color, but you get the idea. Alright, so that's it. That's going to make a really fun visual to look at. Alright, lucky for us, this is our sheet of stock aluminum. It is a 28 gauge aluminum and we're going to use this for a project. And um, you can't really see it's faint, but it has a letter A on it. It means aluminum. Aluminum is going to be on this side. So this is our piece and uh, how convenient is that? It's like cut and it's less than the width. Oh, that's insane. Okay. Alright, so we're just gonna make some marks here because we need to kind of prep this surface. And, uh,. A little sanding, so we're gonna go 600 grit, 1000, 1200. Okay, and we're gonna do a little bit of a wet sand. We're just trying to, you know, we're experimenting here. You know? but we'll see, see how it goes. So I got my rag here with some warm water. See the difference. Looks quite nice. Sanded area. Original. Right. It's got a lot of grooves and stuff, so we're gonna have to go up a little bit. Hopefully my jump is not too big. I'm gonna go to a thousand. Probably should go to eight hundred. Yeah, let's do it right. We're gonna go to eight hundred, thousand, and then a thousand two hundred. We're going to go to uh, finish off with 1,200. The reasons why you use water for wet sanding, or you could sand this dry, but the problem is this paper, the grit gets clogged quite easily. And when you wet sand it, you can wash off the aluminum or whatever metal you're sanding off of the uh, paper so you can get a little bit more life out of it. Also, get a little easier glide so there's less friction, and uh, that's going to give you a better finish. It's one of the reasons why you wet sand versus just dry sand it. 
and then also uh, the uh, it keeps it cool. So you always want to keep these things as cool as possible when you sand them. It's going to be better for the metal and the finish that you want. So keep doing this. We'll finish off, and I'll bring you back. All right, so we're done. This is it. We got this brush metal look. It's got a lot of lines still, so. Yeah, no. It's always a weird thing, like, how far do you go, you know? But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and polish this. We're gonna use uh, some flits. I've never really mastered the art of polishing anything. So we're just gonna play around with this and see what we get, right? Can't hurt. Try. So we're gonna just put a couple of dabs here. Not much to start off with. Got our air tool here with this uh, buffing pad. It attaches to like a roll lock. All right, so let's give it a shot. Cover your ears. Air compressors are putting it all off. Keep the RPMs low. So we're done. This is it. We got this brush metal look. It's got a lot of lines still, so yeah, no. it's always a weird thing, like how far do you go, you know? But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and polish this. We're gonna use uh, some flits. I've never really mastered the art of polishing anything, so we're just gonna play around with this and see what we get, right? Can't hurt. Try. So we're gonna just put a couple of dabs here. Not much to start off with. Got our air tool here with this uh, buffing pad. It attaches to like a roll lock. All right, so let's give it a shot. Cover your ears. Air compressors are putting it off. <laughs> See what we're working with here. Pretty cool, huh? Non sanded, non buff side, buff side. It's got some like circle patterns still. Yeah. But it's pretty insane. Very reflective. It does need to be buffed a little bit more. I don't know really what's the best way to go from here. But either way, the. It looked pretty nice. You can see a lot of the blemishes now in the metal. So the gray hair. Some dings right there. So. so I haven't been doing too well. A lot of mistakes there trying to cut this aluminum with a razor blade. So I'm gonna kinda take you through this process. We gotta do a couple things to get this uh, to work. So you can cut this with a razor. It's uh, it's thin enough to gauge. The gauge is uh, uh, to be. Oh uh, no, uh, yeah, it's 28 gauge. All right. So let's try this again from the top, shall we? Okay. I'm gonna go like this.
So we're going to go just like this. So what we want to do is get a nice razor blade, sharp one. Right, and you're going to uh, do multiple cuts, right? Just multiple. Take your time. So don't press too hard initially. You're trying to create a fault line. Okay. Once you get a good line, go and take your time. So no need to rush. No one's rushing you here. Um, That line is important. Just keep going at it. So you see it's like slipping? The blade, the uh, the tip is uh, is ruined now. So I'll do one more. Yeah. So that slip is gonna make it do weird stuff. So just go ahead and take the blade. Turn it around. Put the new one in. It's not the most economical way to cut aluminum, but it works really well for this low volume, high precision. So I might be able to kind of bend this, maybe. Yeah, we won't do that yet. We'll keep cutting with a couple more razors, and then we'll uh, see how much we can get out. I swear, this was not intentional that this match the perfect width here. Alright, so we're gonna uh, take the. Uh, we're gonna leave a little extra right here because we're gonna, to, we're gonna try to sand it down to make it match. Let's just leave a little extra. It's sort of rough dimensions there. Well, we got to cut this out. Now, there's a couple ways to approach this. I think uh, I think it would be wise to you know. Probably glue it down and cut it out. That's what, that's what my mind tells me to do there. I don't know. Either way, I'll just cut that off and we'll make a decision together. So 
So let's talk about sides to cut on, right? Uh, this would be considered your waist side. So when you set up your cutting, uh, you don't want to cut on this side. This is going to be your good side. You always want to cut on your waist side. So in case you like slip and go this way, you're only going to damage your uh, the side that you don't really care about. You know what I mean? So when you set up your cuts, remember waist side is on the side you want to cut on. I'm going to bend it up just a little bit like this. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> this is going to totally screw me up. Here you go. Not screw me up. This is actually better. You can keep going and keep going. Just keep cutting, you know, without flipping it over. And then eventually you can just do that. So I was going to show you the flip over technique, but you don't have to flip it over. If you're patient, you can keep cutting. That's what you're going to get. All right. So we're moving in the right direction. That's going to be the side with the A. Keeps on getting erased. So I need to do a little bit. Get a better mark. Uh, let's put a dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Hmm. One of these in the outside, like that. The outside. Oh, there you go. Okay. So that's it. We need to now glue this together. All right. Alright, that's it. We're going to do that. We're going to get some special glue. We got uh, this glue right here. It's a marine glue. And uh, put a link in the description. This is going to be what we're going to try to use. I was spent a little bit of time thinking about it, reading about it, and this seems to be like a marine glue would be the best for this application. Alright, so. One of the things is like the wood it will expand and contract, uh, just, just the nature of wood, you know, and uh, the issue is, uh, you know, you're going to have, uh, if you, depending on what kind of adhesive you use, it's going to create a problem in the sense that it's, uh, it could break the bond between the wood and the uh, the metal, you know. So we're trying this. We, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, oh well. We tried. And so the package says uh, we should kind of prep the surface, right? And to do that, it, uh, it recommends uh, clean it with some alcohol to get rid of any like oil and dirt. So we're going to use uh, my favorite isopropyl 99%. So useful. It's probably one of the most important and useful things I've ever purchased. Works for woodworking. Works for electronics. You know. So give that a good, good clean. And that's gonna be how that goes. I'll put a link in the description below where to get that. It's so good, such good stuff. Okay. Right, so that's clean. Clean enough. If you're really feeling cheap, you can reuse your old razor blades. Yeah, I, I am not. I, uh, to cut all that, I used five razor blades. So, right, so we're gonna go ahead and apply. So that, to that, like that. We'll give it like 30 minutes to tack up, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back and clamp it down with some clamps. Hmm. I wonder if you have a feeling like there's a... You can get a punch a hole or something in there. Right, no holes are needed to be punched. It's just coming out pretty... pretty slow here.
It's been like 30 minutes. We gotta clamp this down and uh, let it sit for 24 hours. That's the, that's the cure time, it says. So. So I really messed up. <laughs> Some of you know how I messed up if you make stuff. For those of you that do not, I'll tell you. You're gonna you're gonna laugh, but we can work with it. We can we can we can do some something. We can save ourselves. We can save our situation. Alright. So when I put the aluminum on this piece, right? <laughs> Remember the A? The A side? Alright, that's the side with a dot, right? With the letter A. Alright, this is the side that's supposed to have the aluminum, not this side. This is gonna be on the inside. This is problematic, right? Well, yes it is. So we have to, you know, to, to solve this, right, we're gonna have to drill this out. And then we're gonna have to put some metal aluminum on this side. Uh, other than that, it gives us an opportunity to really give a good shine to this outside piece. I'm a little annoyed at myself, but it's weird, you know, you. I flipped it around. I thought I was like being smart and cutting from this side. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, it's good. We're good. We're good. We're fine. All right. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but on this side. I've got to drill out these holes with uh, some metal bits. I really got to upgrade my uh, drill press situation. I gotta go floor one at some point. You know, life is doing quite well when I get a floor drill press. Or better. It's not bad now. But I'm saying it would be nice. Okay, here we go. I need to get a clamp. Ugh, so much stuff. Oh, that's a good start. So here's the last cut I want to show you um, from the top, like the very, very top, how I set this up and get it done so that way you can cut aluminum easily like I can. Just gotta get your workflow right, you know? So I'm just gonna show you from the very, very top how to do this. All right, so you got your marks, right? Just stick it underneath this piece of metal that you can purchase from your large box retailer. Very useful, very handy. I'm gonna cut on the outside of the marker line because you need to keep it a little bit wider. Use my light here to just give me a little bit of light. I need to ensure that I'm on the outside of that marker line. Okay. I am. Okay. So now I want to clamp it down. It's nice and tight. It's the only way to move. Get your razor blade. This one's no good. See the tip? Alright, so get a new razor blade. Look at this fancy dispenser. It always has a new one ready for you. Okay, pop that out. These are serrated. It's supposed to be extra hard. Whatever. I'll leave it up to you. Jury's on on that one. Okay. So now I'm gonna start off light. Light pass. Okay. The light pass again. A little bit more pressure. Okay, we got a good groove now, so the blade is going to track really well. Yep. Okay. So I'm just giving it a nice oh, right there. So they start to slip like that, and then the tip is ruined. All right. So I'm going to change my angle to make it lower. So make my angle lower. See so that little? It's like really sticky here in the beginning. Right, so that means I'm just going to go ahead and switch this this tip because uh, it's going to give me an inaccurate cut if I continue down that path fighting with it. You just kind of have to get a feel for things, you know, when you do it. So now let's start over again. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, this is good. Okay. 
there's a moment when you feel like you've gone pretty, pretty deep. You can feel it. You know? There you go, that's it. You can feel it. And there it is. That's, so that's how you cut it to precision using a razor blade. Now let's talk about it. So this is uh, what we have. So pretty nice. And uh, this is the side that we were supposed to have on the outside. <laughs> All right, so here's some things to think about when you uh, glue this thing down. When you go to clamp it, it's going to glide a little on you. So just be very mindful that it's just not going to stay where it is, you know. And the other way to try to like minimize that from happening is to just cut this a little bit bigger, so it gives you more room for error. And uh, right now, what we want to do is, uh, can you see the difference? It's like so much shinier. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try to sand the edges down now and uh, see if we can uh, get this flush. So we get the belt sander out, right? We're gonna, um, great tool, by the way. Highly recommend it, very versatile. Uh, so we're gonna try to sand this down and uh, at least the aluminum. This is an 80 grit sandpaper. I usually don't like to sand inside, um, but it's a little cold for me, and uh, I'm feeling lazy and wimpy. Killer combination. So we're gonna go ahead and put on your glasses, and I also have my respirator on, so you don't want any heavy metals in your lungs. Trust me, it kills you. Turned out not too bad. Look at that. I'll lift this a little bit extra. So I think we're going to have to. I don't want to finish it with this. So I don't want to make any. I don't want to go too far. I'll try a different sander. We're going to have to ease these edges. They're a little too sharp. They're a little dangerous. So I've got to think about how I want to do that. Maybe I just like touch it a little, you know, just a little bit. I just need to ease them a little because it is a little dangerous. And the household that this is gonna intended for has a child, so yeah. Let's do that. Let's do it together right now.
See that? That's the kind of stuff you don't want in your lungs. All hard metal. Alright, put on your respirator. All right, so we gotta clean this up a little bit. Get an isopropyl 99.9%. So that's it. So now we gotta give this a really nice treatment. We're gonna redo this side. Same thing, we're gonna just sand it. You see all me sand it. So do the same thing again, get it all the way back to the shiny place, shiny space. So this is a little frustrating. Um, it's hard to see, but Right here, there's some like scratch marks. And this is supposed to be the show side. They're pretty deep. This is the original show side. So much better. I don't know what happened there, but I'm gonna try something, right? I'm gonna use my sander here. Oh, that's weird. All right, I got a little dark. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put my 600 grit sandpaper on here and just see if I can get a little bit more aggressive with the, with the sand and see if I can get rid of those gouges, you know? I don't know. Let's see. Shall we? They're, they're deep enough that 600 grit is just not going to cut it, so probably like... Hmm. Probably something like 200... Okay, whatever. I'm agonizing over a POC. It didn't make a nice texture though. I like this. If I want to get a certain kind of look and thought about this. All right, moving on. I'm gonna go back, finish this off, go back up to like 1200, and uh, buff it down. See what we get out of that. Alright, let's talk about what I learned, so you don't make the same mistakes. Okay, so remember, this is a very cheap galvanized aluminum, big big block, hardware store sells it. Can't go too deep. See that? It starts to get to another layer. So that's gonna that happened because of the sander that we used. See the edge right here. So just remember that. You just want to take it off so it looks like this. You know. Alright, so this is the original side. Now, I made a mistake. You know how I curved the edge, edges? Well, I curved it with the, uh, it was too aggressive. I should have used the, uh, the smaller belt sander, air belt sander. This kind of grabbed it and pulled it off a little bit. So now we have a little bit of a blemish up front here. Yeah, it's going to torture me. But, you know, you live in there and learn, right? Uh, the show side, not too bad. It came out pretty good. It looks really nice. It's got a really nice, wicked brush metal look. I'm sure we can polish it and see what it looks like. I'm kind of fascinated, you know? Alright, let's have at it. You already saw me polish before. 
So this has turned out pretty nice. Um, I got to make an executive decision here. It's going to affect a lot of stuff. I'm going to pour another layer of epoxy, right? But if I pour that layer of epoxy, if I leave this up, this little like catch-all area here, what's going to happen is that because I'm doing that to protect the the side, the wood and the side, I want the epoxy to get to that. I'm going to end up with uh, potential little bubbles in here that I'm going to have to kind of get rid of, right? I usually do that with a little bit of heat, but I don't have that privilege because if I put heat, it's going to probably melt the plastic and then the plastic would get stuck inside the epoxy. So. I'm going to do it, I'm going to move on, move forward with it like that, but anyway, so this is what we have so far. It's looking pretty cool. Um, you know, you can kind of see what we're working with here. Uh, that is your computer. Looks like you can do it a couple ways too, you can go like that also. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't foresee that. That's kind of cool. I, this I did foresee. Okay, so, oh, sorry, get a better shot. There you go. Ugh. Okay, so it looks amazing so far to me, right? Subjective. So, and uh, that's just one side, and then we have this side here, like this. So, it's, it's pretty hot. Um, all right, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I gotta pour another layer, another layer of epoxy right in here to cover that up. So once I pour that, right, because these are holds, I don't want these holds to be unplugged. But I can't plug them with just any old thing. So I'm gonna keep the dowel in there, pour it in here. It's gonna grab the dowel and kind of like make it permanent. Just totally fine. We're at that point anyway. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I do know, you know, I, I will always advocate intellectual pursuit as a priority. And uh, the reason why, it's because uh, your your ability to think well is directly correlated to your overall well-being. And uh, there's no easy, safe way to become a, a good thinker. But I just know that how it's really important that you try your best. That's it.
All right, so I have no idea what this is, uh, you know, how this is gonna work. This is what I want. I wanna get rid of this black, make this silver. If that doesn't work, I'll spray paint it white. But here's the catch. See right here? I don't know if that's powder coated or paint, you know? So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna see if I can just remove this it's a paint remover, you know? And we'll go from there. If not, we'll try just to sand it and see what we get. I'm not gonna stress about it too much, but we'll see. Now let's let this one sit for a little bit. See what happens. I think it, this thing feels like it's powder coated, but I'm not really sure, you know? Yeah, we'll figure this out, right? Yeah, it's been 20 minutes, uh, so. It doesn't look like this is paint. So we're gonna have to go a different route. That sucks. It made my life a lot easier. But anyway, just having fun. See what we can do. Learning stuff along the way, you know? So I was thinking maybe we can kind of just sand this? I don't know, what do you think? So I got a hunt. I don't want to go too aggressive with the sandpaper, so I don't really want to put too many gouge marks in it. The only problem is, is like these little holes here. So yeah, very, very difficult to get at, you know, inside of them. It's going to take a lot of time. But I just want to try it. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Uh, don't forget your respirator. Alright, it's working. It's working slow. Slowly. But it's working. Yeah, let's drop down maybe 80 grit.
This is our last high script sand. We're going to do a wet sand. We're going to do it at 600. Okay. 